Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What's going on, everybody? My name is Elephant, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, I got another SCP video for you guys. This is SCP 591 Evil King Console makes your main character, and this happened. This happens next. Uh, from the looks of the thumbnail, it looked like it was Evil Link. I forgot. It wasn't just called Evil Link. I don't remember the exact name for it. Um. I think it was just called Evil Link. I could be very long from. I think it was Majora's Mask. I don't know any, actually anything about Evil Link. All I know is just like the pretty much the small and informational stuff about it. I don't know the history about it truly. Um, I don't know what truly else to say aside from that little tidbit of information. I do know. I'm just gonna go ahead and click play on this bad boy in three, two, one. Video games have come a long way over the years. Hell yeah, they have. We've gone from the days of Atari and Pong to virtual reality headsets, PS5s, and massive Which I don't have. <laughs> games where you can find I honestly don't think there would be any space where my computer is stationed for a PS PlayStation 5. I'm perfectly content with just my computer. Fight horror movie villains or wage war in a fantasy land. You can mine virtual minerals and avoid creepers in Minecraft. Yep. Compete against people all over the world in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. And do whatever it is people do in Roblox. Games A game I will never play. Isolated hero battling blobby monsters with no discernible facial features. And now they have graphics so detailed, you can see the freckles on a protagonist's face and each individual blade of grass. But there's one thing that hasn't changed, no matter how much progress games may make. Whenever a shiny new console comes out, everyone wants to get their hands on it. Not me. It's Christmas season in 1986. Like I said, I'm content Walk with my like computer. Walk Like by the Bengals was at the top of the charts. Eddie Murphy's The Golden Child was the number one movie in America, and hundreds of thousands of Never seen that were movie. to Santa and begging their parents for one thing, the Nintendo Entertainment System. The NES was an 8-bit home video game console and the only place to journey through the land of Hyrule in The Legend of Zelda, or help Samus hunt space pirates in Metroid. But with some- I have never played a Samus game, or any Metroid game, but I do want to play one. Is there one available? If there's one available on Steam, let me know in the comments section. I will definitely check it out in the future. Such an extreme demand for the system. Stores were selling out all over the country. Anyone who didn't beat the crowds was doomed to disappoint their kids with socks, with less flashy toys like dolls or tiny plastic trucks, or with boring, non-electric, violence-free board games. Well, board games are only violence-free if you're not playing Monopoly. But back to my <laughs> Agreed! I agree so much on that. <laughs> Every time we play Monopoly, it's like a fight or some kind. Whenever, whenever me, me and our couple of friends do it, because we're arguing about property and who wants to what. The last Monop time I played Monopoly was actually a little bit a few months ago with the pr production crew of Kelly Productions. They we were they were over at my house and we had to record a scene for the Midnight Warden film, which you guys saw at the beginning of this video, the little tippet explanation I made for that video. And we were playing Finders at Freddy's Monopoly because it was the first time in a long time that I had opened that box. And my buddy Mike wanted Springtrap so bad, but I wasn't giving it to him. I wasn't giving him the property. <laughs> that that it, he spent, he tried to get in that property off of me for like an hour, and I would not give it to him. I was not willing to back down. Well, I wasn't willing to back down and give him the property at all. 
because it was like it was a i think it was a green square and the green ones are very valuable well in terms of the finance of freddy's monopoly but anyway i'm getting off topic i should probably get back on topic with scp 1986 beverly i wanted to bring that up a single mom doing her best to provide for her son jason and give him the christmas he deserved she had been picking up extra shifts at the local diner, making sure to save up all the extra money for a real Christmas tree from the farm just out of town, for a beautiful honey-baked ham, and, of course, for presents. She knew that though he was a shy kid and would never demand it, Jason desperately wanted to find an NES under the tree on Christmas morning. She got so absorbed in her work, so exhausted from the extra shifts and trying to make everything perfect, that she forgot to do her actual shopping until the very last minute. She woke oh. up the morning of December 24th with a start, her heart jumping into her throat. She hadn't picked up Jason's present yet. She threw on her coat and rushed out into the snowy streets, making her way to the store and saying a silent prayer that they would still have one more NES in stock. Lucky for her, they did. Less lucky, two parents were already wrestling for it fighting each other with a raw, animalistic rage of two wolves competing for the same piece of meat. If she tried to grab it and join in, she could get hurt, or the console could break apart. She asked an employee if they had any in the back, but she already knew the answer from the exhausted look in his eyes. There were no more in the back. There were no more in town, nor the next town over, or the next town over from that. Not only would she have to get Jason's present at the very last minute, but she would also have to get him something he didn't even want. He would smile and thank her, but she knew how sad it would make him to go back to school and hear his friends bragging about their Christmases. She shoved her hands into the pockets of her coat and began her slow, sad march back through the snow, trying to come up with what to do next. Then something caught her eye. A oh, wondertaining. Wondertaining toys. Oh Even boy. It was a storefront. I have to react to Wondertaining. The SCP of Wondertaining. I've I've heard so much about Wondertaining in so many SCP videos. I've both reacted to and watched. And SCP and the Wondertaining Factory, or rather just the Wondertaining SCP itself, or I don't know the true information about it, that's why I'm right now. I don't know any true extent of Wondertaining itself. I don't. I know they remember from the... I know they had something to do with the Mimic dolls. I forgot. I think that's exactly what they're called. The little little tiny SCP ones that were coded from blue, red, green, and yellow. I remember that, and that was made by Wondertaining in the SCP universe. But I don't know much about Wondertaining. So if there is a Wondertaining explanation video out there, guys, please let me know in the comments section so I could finally get some detailed information on Wondertaining itself. And she had never seen before, and right there in the window, a video game console. It wasn't the NES, not exactly, but it looked so much like it. She couldn't help herself. She had to go inside and get a better look. The store was filled with toys, games, and puzzles. They were all inviting, with vivid packaging and labels depicting children having fun, but she had never seen any of them before. Perhaps it was a new brand, and she was one of the first people to happen upon the store. It seemed odd for a toy store to open this close to Christmas, rather than taking advantage of the shopping season and opening earlier in the year. But she couldn't dwell on that, not when she was this close to a solution. Toward the back of the store, she spotted the video game console from the window. The label read, Pretendo. So the resemblance to the NES was no coincidence. This console was intended as a knockoff of some kind. She asked the sales clerk, a man with a strangely wide, unmoving smile, if the console was capable of running Nintendo games. You bet your bottom dollar, he replied. We don't carry those here, though. But can I interest you in some of our Wondertainment originals? We have all kinds of games here, and they're just as good or your money back. There's a whole world inside each and every one. It wasn't what she'd set out to buy, but this was clearly the best thing Beverly was going to find this close to the holiday. She paid the man for the Pretendo console and a selection of the store's most popular video games. He even gift-wrapped it for her in a colorful box with a shiny red bow on top. The next morning, Jason and Beverly sat in the living room, sipping cocoa and opening presents together. She started small with a classic pair of new wool socks and worked her way up to the big box in the corner. 
As Jason tore the paper off, his eyes lit up with glee. Thank you, Mom, thank you! He gave her a huge hug, then looked at her with nearly manic excitement. Can I play it now, can I? She laughed and promised that after he helped her clean up the wrapping paper, he could play his new games. She was just so glad he was happy with it. He didn't care that it wasn't the name brand console. He knew that this gift was special, so she was perfectly glad to let him enjoy it, and she could get started on that ham for later. Jason plugged in his brand new Pretendo and looked through the games his mom had picked out for him. There was Farmtastic Farming Simulator, Historical House Hunter, Magic Wizard Quest, Super Fighters, and one simply called Spooky. Spooky. It was emblazoned with the image of a cartoon ghost in front of an abandoned cabin, and it piqued Jason's interest. He always loved scary stories and legends about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. He decided that this would be the first game that he would play. He placed the cartridge in the console and hit the power button to turn it on. As he clutched the controller in his hands, he began to notice something strange. His room, once decorated in posters of his favorite movies, turned dark. The light green walls became rotting wood. And for lack of a better way to describe it, the entire world's resolution began to shift. If the world around him had graphics, they were getting worse. He could no longer see the screen depicting the game's main menu, and in fact, the console itself had vanished. Somehow he was standing he in the haunted cabin from the cover of the game. He looked down at his hands and found the controller still there. So, not everything had changed. Before he could think any more about this strange... So he got transported he into the game? He heard the sound of ominous music seemingly coming from nowhere. After a moment... I mean, anything related to Wondertainment is deadly to anyone. He realized why the sound of its melody filled him with dread. It was the kind of music that always played in a game when an enemy was getting close. He had to move. He took a step forward and moved through the space as if it was a real house. For the time being, it was. Somehow, he was inside the game. Which meant, the ghost was coming for him soon. He pressed a button on the controller to activate a flashlight, and followed its beam through the darkened cabin. As he walked, looking for clues or any object he could interact with, he could hear the music getting louder. Whatever was coming, it was getting closer. The flashlight's beam illuminated... My phone keeps going off. You're wondering why I'm looking to He left. moved to take a closer look and could just barely make out what it said. They hide in a group the darkness. Chat. Find the exit. Don't stop moving. He heard a sound behind him, and the music reached a deafening volume. He whirled around and saw nothing at after. the hall in front of him, bending around a corner. He knew from the heavy feeling in the pit of his stomach and the music that threatened to rupture his eardrums that there was something horrible waiting for him around that corner. He froze for a moment, then remembered the letter's words of warning. Don't stop moving. He took a step towards the corner, then another and another. He shone the light of the flashlight around the corner, but there was nothing there. No ghost. No monster, nothing. And then he felt it. A chill on the back of his neck. He whirled around and there it was. The ghost of the cabin. It was so much bigger than it had looked before. Wispy white forms stretching up to the ceiling from wall to wall. Its wide dark eyes and gaping maw of a mouth inches from his own face. He screamed and instinctively swung the flashlight at the spirit, cutting through it with a beam of light. The ghost let out a shriek and shrank away from the glow. That was it. He just needed to keep the light on it, and the ghost couldn't hurt him. Jason was so thrilled by this little victory that he didn't even notice the boss music starting to play again, growing louder and louder. He didn't see the movement out of the corner of his eye, the silvery, pale figure of a woman stepping out of a portrait on the wall. A Harry Potter now. <laughs> was a sudden, overwhelming cold, like ice in his veins, and then everything went black. He opened his eyes back in his bedroom, looking at a dark screen with the words Game Over written in dripping red. Fire. Oh, he got sent back he to the real for world. A moment if that had been real or a dream, but either way, he only wanted to do one thing. Play Tell again? His mom. Oh, Everly okay, listened to her son's story and couldn't help but write it off as the overactive imagination of a child. But still, she humored him and agreed to try the console for herself and see what happened. Choosing at random, she selected Farmtastic and pressed play. All of a sudden, she felt the heat of the sun on her face, heard the mooing of cows, and smelled fresh-cut hay. She was steering a tractor through a wide-open field, where a moment ago she had been standing in her house in the dead of winter, 
Jason shut off <laughs> the game, pulling her back into reality. And as Beverly gasped in shock, Jason said, best present ever. Unfortunately <laughs> for Jason, word was already spreading about the Pretendo all the way to the SCP Foundation. The console- Yeah, that didn't last long, kid. ...and all other consoles that the Foundation could track down were seized and designated SCP-591. SCP-591 is a line of video game consoles originally developed as a counterfeit of the Nintendo Entertainment System, before being bought and distributed by Dr. Wondertainment, a toy company responsible for a wide variety of anomalous objects contained by the Foundation over the years. Yeah. The console is capable of playing NES titles, as well as games from Dr. Wondertainment's original lineup of 8-bit games many of which the Foundation has in its possession The library. Well. Some of the titles in the SCP Foundation's library include, but are not limited to, arcade shooter Wapham, platformer Dusky's Adventures in Stadeland, survival horror game Eden. You Can Do That on Television, puzzle game World War I Ace Trench Digger, music racing game Led Zeppelin Air Racers, fighting games Super Kick Karate and Super Kick Karate 2010, and the educational game Reading Rainbow Sit and Listen. Whenever one of the official Dr. Wondertainment cartridges is inserted into the console and activated, it results in a localized CK-class reality restructuring scenario, which rearranges reality in the immediate area to resemble the game's setting. The player inside of the game's affected radius will take on the role of the game's protagonist, and navigate the oh, so that's the game why the title is named that. Or the console is deactivated. Don't oh, worry, makes sense. this isn't one of those if you die in the game, you die in real life scenarios. If the player happens to be a less than adept gamer, they will simply respawn or start at the beginning of the game like any video game character would. That doesn't, however, mean that SCP-591 isn't dangerous. Oh no, it's like definitely dangerous. Vintage technology, the components Anything from what Dr. Wonder Tainment is dangerous. ...of the Pretendo system have degraded over time, their functionality steadily decreasing. For an ordinary game console, this would be a simple inconvenience, something that would impact the quality of the graphics or responsiveness of the controls. It would be annoying and maybe eventually unplayable, but otherwise harmless. For the Pretendo, however, this degradation has had catastrophic events. When a game really? cartridge is inserted into SCP-591, there is now a chance of the CK-class reality restructuring scenario going wrong and resulting in a ZK-class reality failure scenario instead. Essentially, e. instead of just transporting the player into the world of the game, reality will crumble in the designated area and the laws of time, space, and physics will be bent or even broken. While the CK-class scenarios dissipate as soon as the console is deactivated, the ZK-class scenarios refuse to play by the rules. They remain in place wherever they first manifested, seemingly permanently. Oh. The ZK-class scenarios were first observed during playtesting by the research staff assigned to SCP-591. After learning about the nature of the Pretendo game system, Dr. Furukawa has volunteered as a test subject, specifically requesting that he be given the chance to play the Dr. Wondertainment title, The Legend of Swordmaster, because, quote, it just looks really cool. This particular game came with not just the cartridge, but really a professional <laughs> controller to be used during the sword fight sequences. Dr. Furukawa stepped into the containment cell where one instance of SCP-591 had been placed, with his chosen game cartridge and controller waiting for him. As soon as he inserted the cartridge into the console and pressed the start button, the room around him began to transform, reality itself warping and reshaping to fit the world of the game. Fluorescent lights and stark white walls we were replaced by pixelated in the trees game. and a winding cobblestone path leading to a massive stone castle. The first enemy, a knight in black armor, leapt into frame and Dr. Pixels. Furukawa raised his sword ready for combat. But before he had a chance to deal the first blow, it became clear that something wasn't right. The enemy knight suddenly disappeared, glitching out of sight. The cobblestone slowly began to drift into the air, and so did Dr. Furukawa. Just as suddenly as he lifted off, he dropped back to the ground with a heavy thud. Gravity was rapidly fluctuating, and he could scarcely keep his balance. In front of him, he could see random cubic structures popping up out of nowhere, made of wood, stone, and ice. And the game! He called out desperately. Pull the plug, someone, please! Outside, one of the researchers watching the experiment cut the power to the console, but nothing happened. The world refused to return to normal. 
Security officers entered the area and attempted to remove Dr. Furukawa, but found that his body still resembled an 8-bit video game character. When they attempted to drag him out of the ZK class zone, he cried out in pain as his body began to oh, shoot into static. They had turned off the console, but they were unable to pull him out. The rest of the research team, horrified by what they had witnessed, began to take measurements of the reality failure scenario from outside of the room. The area now displayed a complete absence of naturally occurring radiation, including cosmic background radiation. There was also cosmic evidence background of background radiation, reduction of light speed, and the gravity fluctuations that Dr. Furukawa had first noticed. With no way to remove Furukawa from this broken reality, the area would have to be sealed off, and he would be left inside. There was oh. no other option. So they constructed a concrete dome around the testing site and relocated the remaining instances of SCP-591. From that point on, testing was only conducted using D-classes, no matter how much research staff loved video games, or how vehemently they insisted that they were, quote, willing to roll the dice. They were barred from testing and encouraged to pick up a VR headset for a much lower risk immersive gaming experience. Over the years of testing <laughs> following the Dr. Furukawa incident, Four more ZK-class scenarios were created and contained. Some of the individuals survived the incident, but were physically altered so greatly that they would not be able to survive outside of the ZK-class reality failure. The only people who survived were unable to readjust to their lives, continuing to live as the main character of the game that they were playing. At this point, testing was officially suspended indefinitely, oh, due wow. to not only the loss of human life, but also I mean, it the makes sense. and highly dangerous nature of the damage being done to reality on such a grand scale. All instances of SCP-591 confiscated by the Foundation are kept in a storage containment vault, kept separate from any civilians or their infrastructure by a distance of at least 500 meters. It is also kept separate from other Foundation-controlled containment facilities. Unless it is being used for official, approved testing by Level 3 staff, it is to remain deactivated at all times. Any ZK-class scenarios created by an instance of SCP-591 will be contained via the construction of a closed concrete dome, and given the designation of Sector W number. Sectors W1 through W5, the currently existing ZK-class scenarios, are monitored remotely well, about and six. classified. Any personnel or test subjects located inside one of these sectors will remain there indefinitely and be officially considered lost in action. Any additional instances of SCP-591 located in civilian stores, households, or any public place are to be removed and contained indefinitely. As the years have gone by, testing has indicated a steady increase in the rate of ZK-class scenarios being generated from a CK-class scenario. Where it was only a 1% chance, there the is beginning. now a 32% chance. Oh. According to Wondertainment Company records seized during a Foundation raid of one of their toy factories, there are still plenty of SCP-591 instances out there in the world, just waiting for some unsuspecting gamer to fire them up and get lost in the story, literally. If mm. the documents found are accurate, there are around 243 consoles and 1,300 consoles still in circulation. These also may or may not include a Pocket Pretendo model that was developed as a prototype, but never officially released on the market. If it was, and the chaos of the Pretendo system is available in a portable form, well, it's best not to think about that for too long. Yeah. The Foundation is doing its best to track down the remaining Pretendo systems, but there is no way to know for sure what distant corners of the world they've made their way to. So when you're picking up a shiny new game console, or a nostalgic vintage model to relive some of your favorite childhood memories with, take an extra close look at the label and make sure you're getting the real thing. Because if you're not careful, it just might be game over. Now go check Literally. out SCP-1007 Mr. Life and Mr. Death at SCP-001- Oh SCP wait, there is a- I gotta add that. Hold on, I'm gonna add that to my list. List of reaction videos. Never mind, guys. I found there's one here. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe, all stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next reaction video, which is gonna be a Nuke Tops Five. Bye.